Quick as a flash, Formula 1 testing is over, the 2022 season is upon us, and the question we all want to know the answer to is who is fastest? The final leaderboard is a little misleading, so we've gone way beyond that by scrutinising the headline lap times, analysing long runs, watching trackside, hearing from the teams themselves and assessing other factors like reliability and mileage. And because we're apparently desperate to get torn to pieces in the comments and maybe even by a few people in the F1 paddock, we've combined all we know and done our best to rank the teams after pre-season. To start with, our F1 journalists Ed Straw, Mark Hughes and me, Scott Mitchell, all drew up our own rankings. Some parts were identical, but some were completely different. So after much deliberation and trading of information, this is our best estimate. It is by no means a definitive prediction for the season opener, let alone the 2022 season as a whole, but we've got some strong clues indicating who is in a good position and who is on the back foot and setting ourselves up for failure is all part of the pre-season fun. Someone has to fill this spot and unfortunately the way Williams's test flipped in the final days condemned it to 10th. An unspecified procedural problem led to the rear brakes overheating and catching fire on Friday with Nicholas Latifi driving. Our best guess is human error led to the brakes being too hot when the car left the garage. It wiped out one of Latifi's three days of running and one sixth of the team's test, costing it valuable time in terms of setup work and further tyre analysis. The car looks okay on track and we expect it to be fighting in the lower half of the midfield group. It has otherwise had plenty of mileage and no real setbacks, but with one dramatic issue, Williams has gone from looking in good shape to admitting it's on the back foot. Sauber run Alfa Romeo entered the second test behind schedule, but made good progress in Bahrain. Valtteri Bottas set the sixth fastest time, which was made all the more eye-catching by the fact he did it using the C3 Pirellis. But far more importantly, after struggling in Barcelona with reliability problems, some caused by the aggressive porpoising issues and others unrelated mechanical maladies, Alfa Romeo racked up a healthy 343 laps in Bahrain. Floor tweaks allowed it to find a compromised ride height where the car is under control and reasonably quick. But the big concern for star new signing Valtteri Bottas is reliability. Alfa Romeo was far from trouble free in Bahrain with different problems cropping up. Technical director Jan Monchot admits the combination of the risks taken to get close to the minimum weight limit and the loss of running during testing does mean reliability cannot be guaranteed. And while its headline lap time was eye-catching, this is a team that has a history of doing extremely low fuel runs at the end of testing. Alpine had its various problems in Spain and again a few in Bahrain, but it enjoyed a much better final couple of days of this test. Over the course of last week, Alpine looked like at various stages it could be anywhere between the front of the midfield pack and in the back half of it. It has suffered from porpoising, but the team insists by the final day it got a handle on that problem and knew what would trigger it and which changes were required to soothe it. There were also indications that setup improvements had given the car a better balance by the end of the day, although Alonso's eye-catching late run depended on lower fuel and the second softest compound. But it is incredibly congested in this group and any team could be out in Q1 one week and through to Q3 the next. Red Bull's second team had a quietly productive time during pre-season testing without any major problems and it racked up the mileage. The car is certainly quick enough to be in the thick of this ultra-close midfield, but despite completing the third highest mileage of any team, technical director Jody Eggington believes the team still has a lot to learn about its car. AlphaTauri did hit problems with porpoising as the lurid in-car footage of Pierre Gasly from day one of the Bahrain test showed, but got the car under control. From trackside, it looks consistent and predictable, if slightly more understeery than some in certain corners. But as for its pace, even the team isn't really sure. Aston Martin was perhaps the lowest profile team during testing, ending up only ninth quickest of the 10 cars and rarely grabbing the headlines. But historically, this team has tended to keep its head down during pre-season. Even in its peak overachieving underdog Force India days, its drivers were usually found in the middle of the timesheets at best. What really caught the eye was its long run pace, which suggested the AMR22 is genuinely in the mix to be at the front of the midfield pack, although it is in very close company with a handful of other teams. 
As Sebastian Vettel put it, lap times are irrelevant, but Aston Martin successfully phased in some new parts in Bahrain and the car does appear to be working as expected. It appears to head into the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend among the better prepared teams, having kept its cards very close to the chest. Yes, yes, we know what you're thinking, but this has been a weird pre-season for Haas, so why is it so hard to believe that this might be true? If you'd predicted a few weeks ago that Haas would top a day of testing with Kevin Magnussen and end its second fastest with Mick Schumacher driving, you'd have attracted some seriously funny looks. The Haas was almost certainly running low fuel and probably higher engine modes than some others, and it had different track conditions because it was allowed to run later in the evenings as a compromise for a cargo issue causing it to miss the first hours of the test. But whether it's on the lap times, the TV screens, or through our own eyes watching trackside, Haas is impressing. Magnussen even did a good long run in the final morning that was only three tenths of a second on average off Lewis Hamilton over the same length stint and on the same tyre. The bottom line is the VF22 has a good foundation, even though it has continued to suffer a few too many mechanical problems. The McLaren Mercedes MCL36 is certainly a quick car, but it couldn't show it in Bahrain, so its position in this ranking comes with an asterisk. Throughout the Bahrain test, McLaren battled overheating front brakes. Technical director James Key said this resulted in crispy components, which could be used for shorter runs and not on heavy fuel loads. McLaren made running repairs and flew in new parts for the final day, including tweaked brake ducts that ameliorated but did not eliminate the problem. Lando Norris, who completed all of McLaren's running in Bahrain thanks to Daniel Ricciardo being ill with what eventually proved to be COVID-19, reported a better final day. He completed 90 laps on day 3 to take McLaren's tally to 200, but that was still the lowest of all the teams. The McLaren is working well aerodynamically, probably the least affected by porpoising. The question is whether its brake fix will be enough for it to show its true performance in the first Grand Prix. At the end of testing, Mercedes doesn't look in any shape to compete with the top two teams in our list. The porpoising of the W13 is still extreme, and even if we assume the reduced power unit usage seen earlier in the test, that's nowhere near enough to account for the shortfall in single lap pace. Doubters believe Mercedes is just downplaying its performance and poised to repeat its 2021 turnaround when a problematic Bahrain test was followed by victory in the season opener just a few days later. It would certainly be no surprise if a whole chunk of performance could be unlocked once its porpoising is better controlled. Mercedes has even admitted itself that that is possible. But there's no evidence that Mercedes is on the pace of either Red Bull or Ferrari in its current state. And what's uncertain is how close the team is to making the step it needs and whether the season opener will come too quickly. But we've been here several times before with Mercedes, so let's see how much worse its situation really is. Throughout testing, the Ferrari was always towards the sharp end of the timesheets with a car that's quick, consistent and right now appears to be Red Bull's closest challenger. It also has a reliable car, completing more mileage than anyone else across the six days of running. That's what driver Carlos Sainz kept emphasising while claiming he had no idea of how strong they really were competitively. Despite that, Lewis Hamilton is among those who has tipped Ferrari as a potential Bahrain Grand Prix winner. Ferrari will certainly be in the mix and a lot closer than the 7 tenths deficit on the timesheets, with its long run pace suggesting it's within a few tenths of a second. The key question is power unit performance. Ferrari's taken another big step with the engine this year and rival teams are impressed, so with a bit more to come in terms of power modes, that could even allow it to bridge the gap to Red Bull. Red Bull appeared to move the goalposts with its updated car on the final day of testing and Max Verstappen was quickest on both single lap and long run pace. Its running already looked deeply impressive beneath the radar and Verstappen underlined the point by eclipsing even Ferrari. His pace and some of our observations come with the caveat that he did use the softest compound tyres. But the Red Bull looks really impressive on track with a strong front end and good balance and had excellent reliability. Whatever tyre compound was on the car, the Red Bull invariably looked the strongest machine. On our evidence, the Red Bull has a small but significant advantage over the Ferrari, perhaps having taken a little longer to extract the most from its package. 
These are only glimpses of the real competitive order, but they do hint at a Red Bull advantage. The key questions now are how much margin Ferrari has to improve and how far Mercedes really is from getting its act together. That's our ranking of the teams after pre-season testing, but let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to our channel if you want to join us for more in the future.